did not get a chance to incorporate this into a Django app, but I am going to show a lot of comparison to uh, Python syntax um, and some cool reactive elements that I've never been able to do before because I've always been stuck with a backend framework or uh, backend language. Um, Svelte. So it's supposedly one of the easiest front end frameworks to look, to use, uh, but it's actually not a framework. Um, it's, so it's really a front end language um, and it compiles to optimized JavaScript. That means it's very fast to load, um, it, uh, much faster than React and uh, Vue and many of the other uh, front end frameworks that you might be familiar with because it all compiles down to a single file of JavaScript. And there, you know, of course, it does. And it, you know, all your variable names, everything becomes smaller because it's uh, it's compressed. Then, the, uh, and it and it it's portable using Webpack, um, something I'm not at all familiar with, but apparently that makes it cross browser compatible. There's some other packages that um, during the in the build system. All, all this is just the magic that happens when you build um, to create the the zip package that ends up being deployed. And there's a REPL, and that's what I'm most excited about because that's what makes it easy for somebody like me to hack around and create an app with absolutely not even have to set up a dev environment. Um, so this is a this is at the the svelte.dev site that they have a REPL. Um, you can set up an account, you can save save your files, and you can download your your builds. Um, Python, also the most readable language, uh, probably it compiles to optimized bytecode um, and it's similarly interpreted sort of like JavaScript is. And um, I, I think, <laughs> don't, 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 don't quote me on that. Um, uh, it has, you know, of course has a wide range of packages. I forgot to mention that Svelte uh, has uh, a lot of examples and they are all very modular. So that it's, it's, it's built around this concept of a component and you can have a hierarchy of components just like you can have a hierarchy of objects and modules and packages in Python. Um, and it's got a REPL too, of course, we all know that uh, with the IPython. So some example syntax, um, string interpolation in Svelte, uh, curly braces around the variable. Um, and those variables can be live and bound to other variables elsewhere. Uh, by the way, Svelte does not um, interact with the DOM at all. It doesn't parse strings. It doesn't parse the actual DOM elements. It, um, it, it generates the, the renderable HTML and, um, and SVG. Uh, the, um, and Python, of course, we have F strings where we do the same thing. We just put an F in front. So that's the only difference between the two languages in that sense. And these strings can be anywhere, um, you know, within HTML elements, within uh, JavaScript elements. Uh, the variables are always just uh, surrounded by curly braces. Um, then um, Svelte, uh, if you're creating data, of course, we all know that J JSON and, uh, and, and JavaScript are almost identical. And so uh, obviously you can see the big blue let. Of, so we don't have to tell Python anything about variable assignments, not type, not anything. Um, but in, in Svelte, you don't either. Um, but um, there is one other subtle detail. Anybody notice one other subtle difference between Python and Svelte? There's actually two. Trailing comma. Trailing comma at the end of the first row, that's different. And there's another thing that's different. Um, and similarly, colon. the colon, exactly. The colon is optional as well in Python as well as Svelte. So in that sense, they're actually quite similar. I'm not sure whether JavaScript and Svelte are um, making that comma optional in, in later versions or something. Uh, is it still frowned upon? Does it break J JSON? Anybody know if, if a comma breaks JSON in a modern, in a modern browser? Yes, it yeah. does. But if you run it through a compiler first, which you probably are, maybe it will. Uh, it'll probably strip it off. Cool. Okay, so that's that's it for the uh, prepared material. Now let's go to the the REPL and see how this stuff actually works. Um, so I've been hacking on this for the past hour, I guess, and it is um, actually. Let me grab. I need to get the latest version over from my editor. So 
copy all that, put it into the, just in case it doesn't get saved, I wanted to, uh-oh. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, scatter, scatter plot. Where is scatter plot? There it is. I renamed the uh, module. The, uh, the component is now called scatter instead of scatter plot. And it'll automatically recompile if I just pause for long enough. Uh, unfortunately, not. Left, uh, a T in there. Be. Thank you. Wow, mob programming at its best. Woohoo. And um, uh, let's, let's get, bring the zoom down. So you can see that, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there, actually, there aren't any variables here except for these, these the, the data points that we loaded from this data file. So there's three files in this package. There's the data.js containing the, the, the points. There's a uh, scatter.svelte. Uh, and then there's app.svelte. I'm working on adding a slider here so that um, you, can, you can adjust the slope. I'm hoping to use this to teach linear regression in, in a data science course. Um, and that way you can do the man, man, try to fit it manually. And the, we'll also talk about this. This is one of the examples I just can't, I, I, didn't, I didn't create this data or this, um, this stuff. All I've added is this, uh, this slider. And um, th these are the lines that it was required to add the slider. Um, just like in HTML, you give it the min and the max. Uh, uh, you give it the type of, of slider you want. Um, or the type of, of input element you want. So there's the, the input number that you can type here. And then there's the, uh, the slider and they're, and they're bound using this little thing. This is new, this is the Svelte thing that, that binds it to a global variable in this namespace within this file um, called X, X scale. Um, actually need to change that to slope. I was, I was thinking about making it zoom on the X scale like, like you can do with matplotlib, but uh, let's make that um, swoop. Um, that, another thing, let's see what else was going on here. Oh, in order to make this, the thing that was not working that I'd noticed that is not working in the uh, example that they had is this red line. They didn't put a line in there. I had to, and I just hacked around. I didn't know how to draw a line in SVG or HTML or JavaScript. So um, I noticed that you know this this other a lot of the other things are just like the the it's just an HTML tag. So I figure a line would be a line, and I noticed this one for the ticks, um, and that it had an, a Y one and a Y two. So I and I noticed that they they quoted the string to incorporate the actual Y scale function. So that Y scale function's up here uh, defined in the code. There it is. And so, uh, so at Y scale and X scale, that keeps it so that line appears at the right location. Uh, so that, that turns the local coordinates within a, an individual component into the global co coordinates of X and Y pixels in the, in the, within the image. So I use that, uh, those two functions, just copying and pasting from that line element. Uh, where did it go? Here it is. And I figured there must be an X1 and Y1 if there's a, a Y2 and X2 or whatever it was before. And uh, and I use those, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to take that scale, uh, the I mean slope, and pass it into this component. And the way you do that in Svelte is you pass it in up here. You create arguments just like you do in Python to the actual. Sorry, does that may have a question. So there's a um, uh, there's. There's a way to add the, you can spread uh, options into the, so you could say slope equals slope. And I'll put curly braces around it. So it'll be bound to, it'll take the value from up here. Right now it's at 1.5 and I'll make this, I'll bind this to slope. I guess I actually have. So hopefully that will work. I wonder if I need to do a bind down here. I don't know, we'll find out. Um, and then um, let's see if it, Okay, cool. Nothing's happening. Now I need to put that as an argument to the actual um, to the actual component. So I think I just go in there and define it just like we do with uh, Python functions, go into the component and up at the uh, maybe it's just available here. Let's try that. Um, where did it, where'd that line go? Here it is. Let's try slope. Actually do it to the other end of the line. I'll leave those at zero for now. 
or close to zero. And I'll make this one, see if I can just do a multiplication. Wow. Well, it did do try to do something, but slope is not defined. Okay, so I got to figure out how, how to get a, get it in here. That was I'll stop. I'll start floundering pretty quickly here because I'm out of my depth. But there's a thing called where is it? Um, declare props. So I declared props already. That was here. So the answer equals 42. Default values for props. Uh, not sure what that's telling me. Spread the props. Let me see what the, see what the declaring props is inside of the actual element. Oh, export. So I need to do that within the um, within the component. Let's go in. So let's go to my component. Go back to my REPL. Go here's my component. Go up to the top of it. And I need to export. Let, okay, I'm gonna do, in this case, I'm gonna export the scale, or not scale, slope. Oh, wow, it worked. It, it multiplied it by a number <laughs> and sent it flying. So, uh, so now it's just a matter of binding it up. Um, you can see how much fun it is just to play around with, uh, with Svelte Live and a REPL. That's all I have. It's kind of like, it's almost as fun as Python. Any questions? Can you, uh, Hobson, can you, um, I, I know that you didn't get to it, but what, how do you put this into Django? <laughs> uh, there's, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a package, there's always a package in Django. So there's a, a, Svelte, a Django Svelte uh, package that uh, sets up all the, the environment to do your builds automatically. <laughs> Um, you also put it alongside your app. So your app is typically called backend in, in the case when you have a front end framework that you're using. And then, and then you just have another folder right beside that as your app directory. So you create app front end um, in, in from Django. And then you say right next to that, you say NPM uh, something, what is it? Uh, uh, there's a command line, in, there's a command in Svelte to create an app uh, a command line uh, function that you install with npm, just like you would install it with pip, and it will, uh, it will and you use that to create an app called front end. And inside of there, we'll ha you'll have all your Svelte files, and then you you link. I uh, think there's some way to then incorporate that into your static DIRs that I haven't figured out. Thanks. 